Hello there, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So these are fun ones, guys. Mm -hmm. These are fun ones. Like going down this tangled web. Reality is not as it appears. And many people are waking up to that and catching on. That there's stories being told here. Just one or two or a million. Yes, all the above. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, there's different legs to this monstrous behemoth system that, that is in control here. And I had pointed out three, and Cindy had corrected me and said, no, there's four. And she's right. Mm -hmm. So one, which we're going to be focusing on now, plus number two as well, uh, is the religious control, the political control, then we also have the... Well, we have definitely the medical control. Yes. Yes. And what financial. Are we gonna, and financial. Mm -hmm. Right? All Those are all the components that keep this system in place. Here you see Sabitha Sebi, or Sabatai Levi. And you may or may not be familiar with that person. You may or may not have seen these photos. And this is also Jacob Frank. Interesting person. So who was Shabbatai Levi? Well, they say a Kabbalistic false messiah gained a mass following in the 17th century until he converted to Islam. But that's actually very, very telling in and of itself. So while faith in the coming of the messiah is a linchpin of Judaism, and I would put in a hyphen there, because that only happened since basically the Babylonian Persian exile. That's where that comes into play. And the Jews have traditionally taken a patient, quietist approach to their messianic beliefs. Since the devastation wrecked by false messiah Bar Kova and his rebellion against the Romans, which led to the destruction of the temple in 70 AD and the diaspora all over the world. Centuries of persecution caused by another messianic movement, Christianity. The Jews have understandably been suspicious about anybody's claim to be God's anointed. Now, you know, sacrilegious as it may sound, how could anybody claim to be more special than anybody else? Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's just look at it that way. Why are we always looking for somebody to come and save us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all have the same spacesuit. We do. Now, we are, as we have said and shared with you guys, our beliefs, which is that all of us, every one of us, has a connection to the source. It's right inside of us. Mm -hmm. We don't really need to listen to anybody else. We don't need to follow any tradition. But there's always... This sense of belonging. People need to belong. They have this desire to belong. I want to feel like I'm part of something, part of a family, part of something special, and also that innate desire to be something special mm -hmm. when every single one of us already is something special and unique. And that's the beauty of it all. Right. Every plant, every animal, every human, every being that breathes is an expression of source. Exactly. Everyone, a complete legitimate expression of source. As source is basically source prime creator, God with the big G is exploring its creation from every possible angle. Dare we even say it from the dark side of the force? Right. And because source, if, if it's source, it has to contain everything. Does it not? Otherwise, it wouldn't be omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. So, Shabbatai Zevi was said to be born on the 9th of Av in 1626 to a wealthy family of merchants in Smyrna, which is now Izmir, Turkey, received a thorough Talmudic education and, still in his teens, was uh, ordained as a Hakam, a member of the rabbinic elite. Now, however, he was less he was interested less in the Talmud than in Jewish mysticism. Starting in his late teens, he studied Kabbalah, attracting a group of followers whom he initiated into the secrets of this mystical tradition. 
So what we really have is the mystery traditions keeping the secrets of the universe to themselves. In, in the Abrahamic traditions, in the Western society, it's been a mystery, a divine mystery. You know, and it always makes me laugh when I hear people say, and they'll basically say, how could we understand God? Well, that's exactly what people like Shabbatai Zevi want you to do. Mm -hmm. To say, I can't question this. That's God's will. It's not mine. Or maybe it was the will of an Illuminati. Or of somebody else that understands how to control people. So interestingly enough, he battled what, what might be diagnosed today as severe bipolar disorder. Uh, that's interesting as well. So in 1666 here, he actually converted to Islam when faced with being beheaded. Because you had to convert or else. No other option. Suffer not an infidel to live. So he converted. But here's the rub. He still held on to his beliefs secretly and passed that on to his followers that we can infiltrate through appearing to be one thing, but we're something else. Mm -hmm. And when you study the Kabbalah, you learn all about intent, conscious creation, how things work, the fact that the planets themselves, the sun, the stars, all of them are consciousness. You understand a lot more than the typical person who was going to church or to temple in those days, and even in these days. Mm -hmm. So yeah, embracing the Messiah. So I won't go into too much detail here because I, I know we uh, typically people don't want to spend an hour, hour and a half into a video. So we try and we're trying to keep them down to 20, 25 minutes as much as possible um, because otherwise people won't pick them up. So we'll touch on this. We'll come back. We'll bring in new things all the time. And, you know, again, it's through tragedy that people get this feeling of hopelessness, helplessness, you know, through something like what we saw in World War II. And then, you know, of course, the atrocities that the Jewish people faced, not just Jew Jews, gypsies, all sorts of other people were singled out and we know massacred in World War II. And we see here in 1648 to uh, 1649, Cossack bands led by Bogdan Chim Chimielniki massacred 300,000 Jews in Ukraine amid unprecedented acts of cruelty. All this makes people want a Messiah. They want a Savior. It pushes them into a corner where just somebody come and save us. God, save us. But, you know, he ended up converting to Islam, at least apparently. And then he ended up having somebody that picked up the mantle afterwards uh, Jacob Frank, which we were talking about as well, and also pick up that mantle of appear to be something that you're not. Blend in. Get people to trust you. You know, get them to split their sides. Democrat, Republican. Republic crack. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Republic crack. I like that. One party, one world, one order. As you see the skull and bones there. And we see Adam Weishtoff here as well. And now this is the founder of the Bavarian Illuminati, which is very real. Why are they talking about the New World Order? Hmm. Novus Ordo Seclorum. I mean, it's all over the dollar bill, the founding of D.C. It's everywhere. Skull and Bones, interesting society as well. That skull is supposed to be Geronimo's, and, and that's pretty, to me, horrible. That they would have somebody that was so highly revered, if it really is his skull. 
so highly revered by his own people and and they just have it as a trophy you know that's so horribly wrong in and of itself but it, it kind of alludes to the fact of what's been done to the indigenous people of the americas by these people that don't really care about anything but power greed control and themselves well, it's really sad. I believe that school does possess certain abilities, too, and that's why they have it. Uh -huh. Four members of the Skull and Bones cult showed present signing of the USA's National Security Act, which created the CIA. Mm -hmm. See, this is all so intertwined, as we see Nathan Rothschild's famous quote, I care not what puppet is placed upon the throne of England to rule the empire, on which the sun never sets. The man who controls Britain's money supply controls the British Empire, and I control the British money supply. And he also funded the founder of the Illuminati there. So how deep is it? Well, they've got total penetration and control of so many aspects of our belief system. As you see, the Watchtower there, Jehovah's Witnesses, Charles Taze, Russell, yeah, 33rd degree Mason, Book of Mormon, Joseph Smith, 33rd degree Mason. King James, everybody wants to push the King James Bible. Well, yeah, he was a 33rd degree Mason. He was, he was actually the head of all the Masonic lodges. Hello. Time to wake up, guys. How about Charles Darwin? So this is where they tell us they intermix lies and truth. There was creation, there was altering and things like that, and there are creator entities, although all of us have source in us. So that part of us wasn't created by anybody. Anki, you want to take you know, credit for it? No, you can't take credit for it. Same thing with any other entities. Darwin talking about Evolution, well, Darwinian evolution might not be exactly right, but there is an evolutionary process as well. So this is how they get us to take sides, throw the baby out with the bathwater. Ah, St. Constantine the Great. How much of a saint was he? Because he's the one that commissioned, really, the church and the whole structure of the belief system of the church. Even the Protestant churches basically go by the foundational bible and yeah there's some that are some pseudepigraphal works that are not in the protestant bible that are in the catholic you know first and second ezra's for for instance but on the whole the four canonical gospels are the same the same you know and things like was jesus god was he man and by the way you know again it's not jesus that comes from, that's Latin for Jesus. Jesus is Greek for Yeshua. Is he God? Is he man? Is he both? These things were debated. And he basically knew he couldn't beat this uprising of this new religion, but it was so diverse, so diverse, totally different beliefs all across the land. So let's come up with one unified belief. We'll convert to them. We'll say we had this religious experience. I saw a light in the sky. It was Jesus. He told me to conquer the world in his name under, under that sign, the cross. Well, why would he do that when he told Peter, put your sword down? When he said, somebody slaps you on the cheek, turn the other. Somebody wants your cloak, give them your tunic too. That doesn't sound like Yeshua. Conquer? Conquer, conquer, conquer? No, that doesn't sound right. But, you know, they say he's a saint. But here the founder, forefather of the Christian faith, Constantine, ruled under the symbol of the cross, forcibly implemented the Christian faith, his version, by destroying anyone or anything that opposed his new belief system. Killed his wife, son, mother, nephew, best friend, both his brother-in-laws, father-in-law, and others. Yeah. That's some saint. Mm -hmm. By the way, U.S. presidents who were Freemasons. George Washington. And before we go any farther, I just want to say, too, that this infiltration 
that we see from the Shabbatian mindset, the Jacobite Frankian mindset, the Illuminati mindset for that matter. There were people that were passing on hidden knowledge, but weren't necessarily out there uh, to control the world, so to speak, like we see with the cabal that's in power now and has been in power for a long time. They just wanted to preserve ancient knowledge that was being eradicated, like with the burnings mm -hmm. at Alexandria. Right, right. And that all that knowledge that was gone and then the infiltration that came in and basically took over what might have had some you know true benevolence in them some 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 actual groups and movements so yeah george washington james monroe andrew jackson james k polk james buchanan andrew johnson garfield william mckinley theodore roosevelt William Howard Taft, Warren G. Harding, FDR, Harry S. Truman, Gerald Ford, and it goes on and on. Oh, if we want to talk Bohemian Grove, which I didn't pull up, you can still see pictures of Nixon and Reagan there mm -hmm. at Bohemian Grove, another secret society's hotspot. And who knows what happens there? Maybe they all give each other back rubs and... In the bathtub. I don't know what I'm they sure do. I'm sure it's sweet and innocent. Yeah, it's it's perfectly innocent. Mm -hmm. Perfectly. But those giant effigies they burn. 13 most powerful members of the skull and bones. And Taft. Ooh. Some of these guys double dip, by the way, guys. Walter Camp. That's actually the father of American football. Hmm. Kid you not. Lyman Spitzer. He was an astrophysicist. I wonder if, you know, well, we could get into NASA, which he was a part of. And we could also talk about, you know, as we did before, Operation uh, Paperclip and bringing over those scientists from the NIZ, NAZIs. Potter Stewart. He became the editor of the Yale Law Review in his time as Yale and then a Supreme Court Justice. McGeorge Bundy, before becoming one of JFK's wise men, he may have relied on one of his big brothers to help him get into Skull and Bones. William Bundy, who graduated class earlier, went on to serve as State Department liaison official, notably during the Bay of Pigs invasion. Odin, as fellow bonesmen called him, however, left his own mark on the world. Though potentially not positive, one of Kennedy's advisors, he heavily impacted the evolution of the Vietnam War. After his death, fellow officials used his notes to express regret about the many policies enacted in the era. George Herbert Walker Bush, there you go. Yes. William F. Buckley. Interesting how money just follows these people. Mm -hmm. John F. Carey. Frederick Wallace Smith founded FedEx. How much money does he have? And the other George Bush. And by the way, you know, I have a family member that went to college at Yale with him. Said he was a dunce, just plain and simple. Said no way he could pass anything if it wasn't for his name. But he did say he was actually a class clown and a lot of fun at the same time. Uh, Stephen A. Schwartzman, class of 1969. He came to prominence under the future president's administration. The Blackstone Group, that was under the Bush administration. The Blackstone Group went public in 2007. Hmm, made an average of a million dollars a day for the fiscal year ending 2006. Personal fortune about $7.7 billion. Well, maybe that's just a quinky dink that he happens to be in one of these secret societies. Mm -hmm. Dana Milbank. And this is a journalist. Ah, oh, I'm sure that there's no way there would be any bias in there. Mm, molding the innocent minds of men and women across the world. Yeah, yeah. Actually wrote uh, for the Washington Post. Oh, oh, wow. Such a respectable paper. Yes. <coughs> 
just for you guys that don't get it. Because there's always one out there that doesn't get stuff. Yeah. Also wrote Tears of a Clown, Glenn Beck and the Teabagging of America. Hmm. Okay. Austin Goolsby. Ooh, what a name. Goolsby. Yeah, he's an economist as well. Part of Obama's cabinet. Hmm. No kidding. And he appeared on many shows, including The Daily Show. And they didn't allow women until... Wow. Oh, my God. It's it's the Fayor's daughter. It is. There she is. Yavol. Yes. So we could see the apples don't fall far from the tree. The control is in every aspect of our lives, framing our very society. And fulfilling whose wishes, really? Right. Are they really working for the people? How about when we look at, at the religious aspect? All those people that are founding, you know, following Jehovah's Witnesses and just following anything without questioning it. Mm -hmm. I hope this was a wake-up call for many. And I know a lot of you guys are already very familiar with all of this. Make sure you are subscribed, have the bell click. Thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. As always, keep waking up more people, guys. God bless and namaste. God bless and namaste.